But I don't wanna play for nobody. I wanna play for Today I'm going to speak to you on behalf of a race of beings whom you all know, you've all experienced, and whose talents and wonders and intricacies you are I'm sure aware of, but perhaps can overlook on occasion. And to overlook these magical giants is only really doing yourself a disservice. So today we're going to talk about trees. I considered taking this meeting to discuss sacred magical locations that form and exist in the natural world, even some man-made sacred locations, but I realized that more than half of these locations all depended on their connection to or existence in tandem with trees and that the trees in many ways were feeding the magical nature of these places. Like most plants, trees grow somewhat of their own volition, which gives them a lot of personality, Um, but they also flock. They often come in like groups and herds and whole civilizations, if you will. There's a reason that there are a lot of forests that are prefaced with the word enchanted, because that many trees in one place, the little spark of magical energy of one tree is just all amplified and becomes incredibly potent in such a dense gathering. They're tall and they're firm, and yet they don't seem like old skeletons like a mountain does. A mountain isn't phased by wind, but a tree also doesn't blow away like grass or or the leaves that fall off of it. It has its place, and it's sturdy, and it's stationary, but it is affected. It's it's a lot like us. And that, I think, lends to its personification. It, it has cycles with the seasons. Besides the weather itself, plants, and specifically trees, are the thing that changes with seasons. Everything else stays the same. Ground is eroded by time, but not by season. Tides move up and down at the whim of weather and the push and pull of celestial bodies and such. But trees age over long periods of time and their their hair grows long and it gets cut. They get bright and fresh and lively in the summertime. They shake off snow in the winter. It'd be hard pressed to find a more human object. And so they stand, like us, in fields and groups and little cliques. But as I realized in my earlier studies, they are also the great creators of the most prominent magical locations that exist in the world. The categories, that is. Let's think about some of the most common and potent sacred places. Groves. Groves are a big deal. Groves are very often magical. Clearings, not as much. Fields, not really, but groves coming out of a thick gathering of trees into just a small little pocket of open space. It's as if the crowd of trees has left a little spot for you to stand. You're not underfoot. You're sort of an equal with them in that case. Then it's like the trees found something really cool, really interesting, really beautiful, and you've come in and they're letting you see, like a little present. Hollow trees are 100% always magical. It's like the tree is giving you a hug. You're you're swaddled with it. It's made a little spot like a kangaroo mom for you to sit in and be safe. Or it has a little pocket to place messages and it'll keep it very well protected until some other whimsical correspondent comes along. By nature, trees hold things. They hold things up. You can have swings from their boughs and tree houses. Basically, any kind of fort is automatically magical. And tree houses are even more so because they're up in the air. 
And all of these features, they bring up and emphasize these big obvious attributes of trees. They are protective. They're protectors. You get a feeling of someone older, wiser, taller, and stronger watching out for you. You can sit by their knee and read a book and they'll stay there. They're not going to move. They don't have something better to do than be your little back support. You aren't taking up their time or cramping their style. They live so long that you can become acquainted. You go away for years and a tree will still be standing there when you get back. And so they have pasts, they have history, they have experienced things. They've experienced winters and springs, storms just like you have. They've had accidents where someone's bumped into them and they lost a branch, hurt themselves, healed. And so there's a sense that they have souls like we do. And so when one of those souls, one of those beings does something or is a part of something, it gives it that much more meaning and that much more importance. If two trees are forming an arch, good gosh gracious, surely that arch leads to a magical land. Or at the very least once formed a roof over some sacred ceremony. They send messages, much like path builders. Because they're so personable, you feel that they're doing things intentionally. They're like a perfect parent, and forests like the perfect community. We've established they care, they pay attention, they're sturdy, firm, reliable. They lived years, they're not going to get bored of you. They can handle the bad weather, they can handle the storms. You can walk amongst them, feel they're paying attention, but not poking at you, not bothering you, letting you be, as they would be. Their culture is very peaceful. One tree doesn't bother another. In fact, they often grow and wind neatly around each other because they respect them as a fellow tree. But not lonely. Forests are the quiet crowd. Like genuine friends, all minding their own business, but ready if you need them. Just a presence. A welcoming presence. And they're a reassuring people to have as friends. Gives you a lot of confidence against whatever malice may attempt to befall you, knowing that there's some hundred giant beings still, but watching. A lot of magic starts with trees, so I suspect that we can learn a lot from them. I recommend getting acquainted. Perhaps some sort of pen pal arrangement would be appropriate. They do definitely seem the type for a more slow but detailed correspondence. Well, the hour grows late, so I will end with an encouragement to do a little bit of socializing with our tall, slender friends. I assure you that they will be welcoming. <laughs>